Hello, welcome back. This time we'll be learning how to navigate around the 3D scene. There are some preferences which affect that also, so at the same time let's take a look at how those can be changed to make life easier for some tasks. To begin with, using the mouse and holding down the middle mouse button, the view can be rotated around. If we hold shift and then use the middle mouse button, the view can be panned sort of up, down and left and right. Finally, using the scroll wheel, the view can be zoomed in and out. Zooming is also possible holding down control and the uh, middle mouse button moving up and down there will do that for you. I guess that would bring us to the first of the preferences you might need in the case of not having a middle mouse button or a scroll wheel. So if we go to the file menu and open the user preferences, in the input section we'll find this emulate three button mouse option which lets you hold down alt and then left mouse acts like the middle mouse button so alt and left mouse is like holding down middle mouse button it'll let you rotate the view alt and shift and left mouse is panning and alt and control will will zoom so you may notice if I rotate the view the mouse will warp from one side of the screen to the other so I can carry on rotating even after sort of hitting the edge of the viewport. This is the continuous grab set, uh, setting uh, also found here in the preferences. As far as zooming goes there are three zoom styles which refer to when control is held and middle mouse button is pressed. Dolly and scale are very similar basically the view zooms as the mouse is moved up or down. Continue is slightly different insofar as the view will start to move as the mouse is moved up or down and will continue to move until the mouse is moved back to the starting position or released. The further the mouse is moved, the faster the zoom. This could cause you to lose track of the objects fairly easily, but it is the method that I personally prefer, especially when used with some of the other preferences, which we'll cover in a bit. I'd like to add at this point that if you do lose track of the objects, either the home key can be pressed to bring the view back to view all objects, or an object selected from the outliner with a left click, say, and press the decimal point on the number pad. The other option in that section is the orbit style, the default being turntable. You'll see if I grab the side of the screen here how the view is rotating around the sort of horizontal there. With trackball enabled, grabbing the side of the screen will sort of roll the view. So these are going to be more about personal preference than anything. However, I'd say for modeling in environments, turntable would be easier. For other sorts of models, it's sometimes useful to be able to roll the view to move things along a certain viewing angle or so perhaps. But I think it's down to the individual really to get a feel for what works best on a case by case basis. So the number pad can also be used to enter specific views. For example, number pad 1 will give a front view, and number pad 3 gives a right hand side view, and number pad 7 is a top view. So using control and those keys will give opposing views. So control in number pad 1 is the back view, control in number pad 3 is the left hand side view, and control in number pad 7 is a bottom view. 2, 4, 6 and 8 can be used to rotate the view in sort of 15 degree increments. That angle can be adjusted in the user preferences interface section as a rotation angle. All that's left then is number pad 0 which gives a view of the current scene camera. So from the camera's perspective if you will, we'll cover that in, uh, in a different video. And number pad 5 which switches between uh, perspective and orthographic views. Now, when in orthographic there is no perspective so everything appears flattened out and it doesn't matter how far an objects, uh, objects are away from the viewer. So if you were working from say floor plans or architectural elevations for example it's likely you would want to use front and side orthographic views to place things accurately. There are a couple more preferences you might want to have a play with. 
Uh, so to demonstrate on layer 2, I've set up a bunch of cubes. A blender has 20 scene layers which can be toggled on and off on the header here. So holding down shift and clicking on a layer will either enable or disable it. You can actually enable multiple layers. So if you keep if you hold down shift and hold down the left mouse and you can sort of paint over a layer or to paint over the layers to enable them. And if you've disabled a layer, then you can paint over to disable sort of multiple layers at, uh, uh, like that. So I'm just going to use the, uh, the the second layer here. First of all, let's bring up the user preferences. And we can see here we've got one called zoom to mouse position. So let's just demonstrate that. If I have the mouse in the sort of right hand portion of the screen here and I zoom in, we can see that it's zooming in, but it's zooming towards sort of this location here. And this is the sort of focal point of the scene at the moment. It's the point at which the scene is rotating around and also zooming towards. So if we bring up the user preferences, control alt u again will do that. I can tick now zoom to mouse position and we should see if I have the mouse in the right hand portion of the screen how zooming in in that portion will zoom in over there and similarly I can do the same thing over here like just like that. Next we've got rotate around selection. So to demonstrate this, if I have a selection, I can right click on an object to select it in the viewport. We can see how we're rotating now around this object fairly nicely. If I was to go over here and select, say, this object, I can zoom into it using our zoom to mouse position quite nicely. But now if I try to rotate around it, we're not really rotating around a, a, a nice point to view this object from all sides. Now you could fix that, you could press the number pad decimal point there to focus the view on this object and then rotating around you'd be able to rotate around that quite nicely. So similarly over here we can just press the number pad decimal and recenter the views zooming and rotating on this object. If we have rotate around selection enabled though, what we can do is just select an object over here and then the, the view will automatically rotate around that point. So we can zoom and pan and do whatever we want and we're going to stay focused on this object. So let's select something over here, you can see how the object is staying in the view. That brings me to uh, another preference that you might, might notice. If I select this over here and kind of try and zoom in on it, at some point the zooming kind of stops happening and that's because we the zooming point of the uh, the 3d view is has been moved around and it's some it's located you know maybe somewhere around this line or something like that so as soon as we start to cross that line the zoom uh, stops happening so again the number pad decimal point could be used to solve that issue however we do have another preference here which is called auto depth now turning that on and I'm going to I'm going to disable rotate around selection as I found personally that these guys don't sort of play well together. You could have an experiment and um, and see how you go with it but it, in my experience I found that they uh, they they don't kind of work that well together. So now we've got auto depth enabled. What that means is that it will zoom to the depth under the mouse cursor. So I can zoom all the way in on this object and I can rotate around it also fairly nicely. And similarly, I could zoom in right over here on this object and use the, ro um, the auto depth to rotate around it. So you should be able to see if I rotate around this one, how that's working. And then I could grab a point over here and rotate around that point without having to make any other selections. So it's up to you really to perhaps have a play with these. I'd suggest auto depth for large environments is good because you can hold down your control key and, and the middle mouse and kind of just use the continue zoom style to zoom in on different parts really quickly and uh, and, and, and easily. But you should uh, have a practice and, uh, and see what works best for you. So those are the preferences that I want to cover. There'll probably be some other ones that come up in later videos, but we'll cover those when we need them. This should be enough to kind of get you started and have a play with what works best for you.